Well, it finally happened. Tesla has started a wide rollout of version 10 of the software that runs its vehicles. Now we've had version 10 for a little over a week now, so we've gotten to play around with it quite a bit. And I want to give you my first impressions of the software, which features I think are super useful and which features I think are a little overhyped. Let's dive in. First, Smart Summon. This is one of the most hyped features for the version 10 software and what it allows you to do is have your Tesla drive itself to a location you pinpoint through the Tesla app. Now do note that you do have to pay attention at all times to what your car is doing. You have to continually hold down the button for Smart Summon just like you had to with regular Summon. Now it's pretty surreal to see your car drive to a spot that you pinpoint on a map. Don't get me wrong but I think Smart Summon is one of those features that is a little bit overhyped and not as practical as you may think. About the only scenario I could see myself using this in is I'm at the front of a store, it's pouring down rain and I want my car to drive up to the front of the store. And there are some videos of people using this feature already for exactly that purpose. However, you have to keep a couple of things in mind. One, you have to be in, within range of your car. I, like a lot of you out there who have Model 3s and other Teslas, I'm sure, always park your car either at the end of the parking lot or away from all the other cars. So depending on how big the parking lot is, you may not even be within range of Smart Summon. Two, you always have to keep visual contact with your car. So depending on sight lines, how the parking lot is set up, where you are at the front of the store, that may not be possible with the scenario of pouring down rain and my car's at the back of a parking lot. And three, you have to consider if it's a crowded parking lot, there are other people driving around with their cell phones, not paying attention, and there are people walking around as well which is why you have to keep visual contact with your car. But even then, you could be potentially putting your car in a scenario where it is more likely to get hit because of the stupidity of other drivers not seeing your car. There are already videos on Twitter and YouTube of this happening just in the first week of this feature being released. So all of that combined is why I would bucket Smart Summon in the cool party trick feature category versus putting it in something that's super useful like Autopilot is. Now, when Tesla gets to the point where you no longer have to keep visual contact with your car and you can just tell it to go to this point on a map and you don't have to worry about what's going to happen to it, then I think this feature will be extremely useful and will be the envy of everyone else who drives an automobile. But until that point, I think it's a party trick feature as of now. All right, let's move on to another feature that Tesla debuted, and this is an enhanced driving visualization feature, which I think is actually really useful. The updated visualization now shows a difference between solid lines, double yellow lines, and dashed lines. It also shows you more cars around as well as picks up cross traffic better. It also allows you to resize the visualization so you can see your car and its surroundings at every angle and it just adds to the confidence of what your car sees and confirms that it's seeing the exact same things as you. It seems the refresh rate of the sensors or something has been improved because the animations for the driving visualization are now just buttery smooth. Another area where Tesla improved the visualization is with the automatic lane change feature. Now it shows exactly the space in the next lane where the car wishes to go, giving you even more confidence in the action the car is about to take. Next up, map improvements. Tesla has now made it easy to click points of interest to get more information about them. A little card appears with the address and buttons to navigate to the location, call the location, or go to their website. This is definitely a great addition, especially for those of us who like to choose places to go to through maps like Google Maps. Also, like Google, Tesla has added an I'm feeling lucky button for those of us who know we want to go somewhere in our cars, but just don't know where yet. So far in my experience with I'm feeling lucky is that the feature skews towards directing you to a lot of parks, which I actually quite like. Tesla also added an I'm feeling hungry button as well to the car. So for the times where you have no idea where you want to go eat, now all you have to do is get in your car, click I'm feeling hungry and go. The amount of time this will save me is immeasurable. Next up, 
Spotify has finally been added to US Tesla cars. This was one of the largest missing features that I pointed out in my six months later review of the Tesla Model 3, and I'm glad that it has finally been added to US Teslas. It's very easy to add your Spotify premium account, uh, which you will need in order to use this feature. There is no Spotify free tier with your Tesla. The only disappointment I still have with this feature is that when you use the speech input button on the steering wheel to play a song with Spotify selected in your media options, you can tell it to play a really popular song and Tesla will still give you this, I have no idea what you're talking about, and give you like a list of did you mean an artist, a song, an album, etc. And I'm talking about like really popular songs here, like Shawn Mendes hits, Taylor Swift, like it just doesn't automatically know what song I'm talking about, which is very frustrating. Now, I'm a big fan of the Google Assistant because it can play both Spotify and Google Play slash YouTube Music. And I specifically have a Pixel 3a in my Tesla for the purpose of using the Google Assistant to play media through the Tesla. And unfortunately, that experience is still just way better and quicker then using the button on the steering wheel to try to get the Tesla to play a song on Spotify and it just, it's either too slow or it doesn't know the song I'm talking about. So as of now, I'm still sticking with using my mobile device to play music and podcasts through the Tesla. Speaking of music, Tesla has also increased the sampling quality of the Bluetooth connection to 48 hertz, making the audio quality in the car even better. They've also made an improvement to the car where it will display the correct album artwork from your mobile device playing the media. Next up, Joe Mode. Joe Mode is one of my favorite features of this software update. If you're like me and you use speed chimes or you get annoyed that other chimes in your Tesla just see, seem very loud, especially if you've had music playing loudly or something, the chimes typically match that volume. What Joe Mode does is it finally allows you to lower the volume of those chimes. A guy named Joe requested this feature. That's why it's called Joe Mode. When you turn it on, you'll still hear the chimes from the driver's seat, but your passengers will not hear them as much. Thanks, Joe. Next up, Tesla Theater. You can now access Hulu, YouTube, Netflix, and Tesla tutorial videos streamed directly over LTE for now. We'll see how long Tesla keeps the LTE streaming for this feature enabled. Now, do note this feature is only available when your car is in park and can be found by going to the application launcher. The video quality is actually quite good and the screen looks great as well. Plus the sound of my Model 3 is just superb. This is just another great way to kill time during a supercharging stop. Next up, karaoke mode. And you heard that right, that is how this mode is pronounced. You can now choose from a library of songs that you can sing karaoke to. A lot of popular stuff's in there, as well as quite a few Disney songs. So if you're a singing family, I think you're really going to enjoy this feature. You can click the mic button to turn on and off the vocals, depending on whether or not you just want to sing along to the background track. Next up, improvements to dash cam and sentry mode. The rear camera of the car has now been added to dash cam mode. So you now basically have full recording coverage around your Tesla while driving it, which gives you peace of mind knowing that if anything happens to you that isn't your fault when you're driving your Tesla, you'll have video to back it up. Tesla has also improved sentry mode as well. The clips for sentry mode are now saved in a separate folder on the USB drive that you can plug into your Tesla to store footage from sentry mode as well as your dash cam. Old sentry mode events will automatically now be deleted so you don't run out of storage on your USB device. Next up, the mobile app has now been enhanced so it now shows you the status of a software update in progress on your Tesla. If you're in the car during a software update, Tesla has made an enhancement there as well where you'll now see a progress bar to show you how far along you are in the software update. You can also now vent your windows from the app as well as open and close your garage door from the app if you have linked your garage door to your Tesla through Homelink. Last but not least, Tesla has added Cuphead to the Tesla Arcade. Note you will need to use a USB controller to play the game either in a single or multiplayer mode. And this game is actually quite cool. It's got like a 1930s vibe to it. It's again going to be a great 
feature for supercharging stops and especially if you have kids. All right, well that's it for the major features out of the version 10 software release. This has been by far the biggest software release that my car has received since I've owned it and it's a great reminder why owning a Tesla is just such a better experience than owning any other car. You're just not going to get the same types of features and software releases from any other car manufacturer out there. I mean, most of the manufacturers out there are not even anywhere close to where Tesla is at this level and version 10 of their software just blows away the competition. If you're in the market for a Tesla, definitely make sure you use a referral code when you order your car. Referral codes typically get you free supercharging credits. Tesla has been playing around with the number of credits you get when you use a referral code. So definitely click a referral code and you'll be able to see the current offer. You can use our referral code in the description below, your friends, neighbors, or whomever. Just make sure you use a referral code when you order a Tesla. If you don't, you're leaving free supercharging credits on the table. If you like this video, make sure to hit that thumbs up button below and subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see more Tesla videos like this one. Well, for six months later, I'm Josh Tedder. Thanks for watching.